Nerd Uprising. Hey guys and gals, welcome back to Nerder Things. And today we are going to discuss Anthem because unfortunately it's more fun to talk about the game than it is to actually play it. So there was a really interesting <laughs> article on Kotaku written by Jason Schreier where he interviewed 19 people that either work for Bioware or left Bioware, and they were talking about the issues of the game. Now, I always thought with the game that maybe, you've heard me, if you watch our live streams, when in the beginning, I'm sitting there yelling at the game, saying, why is this game shipped like this? Why, why did they launch this game? Did they play this game? And apparently, you know, I was thinking maybe they only did one reboot of the game and then restart, but apparently they rebooted and restarted the game several times if you believe this article so i think probably the most important quote that was said by one of the devs was that this is what happens when you have multiple studios going to war with each other hmm. so i i worked for a company that had multiple divisions that were at war with each other and that company ended up going bankrupt so this is what you have so everything starts with the vision right my people perish for a, for a lack of vision. I don't care what you're doing, what organization you are in. You need to have a you need to have a vision. I'm not just saying this because I'm some random dude that uh, plays video games. That, right? I've been in. I've worked for two Fortune 100 companies and had executive roles. And I have two business degrees. And I own my own business. I own several businesses right now. And I got to tell you. It's very important to have a vision in what you're doing. Apparently, there was no vision. Uh, first off, they couldn't even decide on what so, what sort of game this was, right? At one point in time, this game was a survival game where you, ha where you were on a planet that fought against you and you'd have to go and survive electrical storms that would come in. Or maybe there's a volcano and you had to put the, go inside the volcano, put the volcano out. And that, that would be what you're doing. And then it was low action. Uh, they had another version of the game where the game was kind of like the Bermuda Triangle of space. And there would be different aliens that were stuck on the planet. And you couldn't escape, but you had to try to survive fighting all the different types of aliens. And you were the weaker part. I guess at one point in time... one point in time, they had you riding a monster. Like you were walking on a monster. What, what was that game, I think? Shadow of the Colossus? Right, and then they said there was a looter shooter. And they just kept bouncing in between the three. And I guess every time that they did it, they had to, like, reboot the game. So this game was out for seven years. Like, they actually worked on this game for seven years. It, they didn't really have a vision, but we'll talk about that later. But they finally got a vision a year and a half out. Uh, they worked on an engine. Sorry, I'm keeping my notes. Uh, the article is really interesting, but it took me probably an hour to read. Probably longer than an hour to read it. So it was written like a novel. But the engine that they used, the Frostbite engine, apparently doesn't wor really work well for online, online pervasive worlds. Uh, they were forced by some EA, EA executive who said that they would save money if they only used a one engine and they had ex expertise. But the devs, when they were talking about it, they said that the Frostbite has razor blades. So they're not only just fighting their environment and trying to get it to do what the environment is trying to do, but then they're also having to fight development tools. So I guess they were saying people passed to even work on the game because of what they were having to use, which was Frostbite. Uh, even worse... Is that they had engineers devoted to specialize in frostbite, but because it was such a mess, that they had limited a limited amount of engineers. Right, they had a limited amount of engineers in the game. Work, sorry to work on frostbite, but the you got more time, you got more development time, you got more help based on your sales or expected sales. So I apparently FIFA, like who plays soccer? 
I, sorry, this is America. Nobody plays soccer here. And as far as I'm concerned, it's not a sport. If your hands don't actually touch the ball, it's not a sport. But anyway, <laughs> FIFA is EA's number one revenue generator, so that got all the time, and Anthem got bumped to the side. So when they were really needing help to get the engine going, they couldn't. So they were str they, apparently they struggled with the engine for years. Like up to 2017, they were still struggling with getting the engine to work. Uh, so they spent five years in pre-production. Five years. And then, I guess, apparently in 2018, when they did their E3, they finally got a vision because somebody put a video together. So that whole big trailer where they're saying that this is actual game footage, it was not. That was a lie. Apparently, from what the developers were saying at that point in time, they had nothing. They had absolutely nothing, and that, and they didn't even have a, any sort of vision of what the game was even about. You know, it'd be cool if they if if they made this game about transforming robots on Cybertron. I'd be into it more <laughs> if I was like, really. If I could turn it into like a tractor trailer, or a big gun, or a jet, or a tank, or or a dino dinosaur, a robotic dinosaur, I'd be into that. Right. At least you would have had some ideas to bring forward. Or maybe they would have shut that down, too. Right. I mean, you think about it. They had a, they just had a ton of people going in different directions, and then they would just destroy their ideas. Like, they would say, this is what we're going to do, this is what I'm doing, and they didn't have a vision. And they'd have a guy that had people working on stuff for years. I think how messed up that is that you're working on something for years, and then somebody comes through and, delete, and hits the delete button. Oh. They didn't even take any of the ideas. They just delete the whole whole idea. So they spent five years in pre-production. They spent only an actual year and a half on working on the game. So it's amazing they were able to come up with what they did in that amount of time. Right? It's absolutely amazing for the amount of what they did. But that's why this game felt rushed. Like you said, you can hear me in the, in the live stream yelling at the game. Like, why was this game launched like this? Like, did anybody ever test this? And apparently from what we know from what the devs are saying, like, if you recall, back on our earlier streams, we, you can see us crashing over and over again. Apparently the servers weren't up, so you had, like, Q&A signing off that this level was good or signing off on this, that, and the other, but at the end of the day, they didn't even actually get to play it. There was stuff here that was readily, you could see it, right? You had sound bugs. You had constant disconnects. You had loads. You wanted to change an item. You wanted to change it, and I am. It would take five minutes of loading screens. What other bugs were there? You you killed monsters, and they would just freeze and freeze in the air, right? Oh yeah, and recently you would launch into a, um, a level to start playing, and your head would be cut off, or you couldn't fly. Right, I think it's still there. Yeah, and what that does is your head is missing, your colors reset, you can't fly, and then your game crashes. Yeah, and Opal, I could barely hear what you're saying, but that was a good point. Turn yourself up a little, Opal. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there, there were just a ton of bugs. And, like, come on, we figure those out in an hour. We were running into bugs an hour after we were playing, and it wasn't like some. We weren't trying to break the game. It just, it was just broken, and nobody. Apparently, what they're saying is number one. They didn't test it, or if they tested it, they reported it, and EA said no. We're launching anyway. So, apparently. What they thought they were going to do, they, they just were going to do the Bioware magic where they were just going to fix everything at the end. And that, that <laughs> never works. Like, what do they think they were going to do? They were going to they have some sort of magic dust <laughs> they can just sprinkle on something and then just make it better? Like, do any of those people over there have, over there have magic wands where they're just going to wave the magic wand at the server and fix it? <laughs> like, really? The problem is there's not enough development time. And you could argue that EA isn't the bad guy because seven years is a huge development cycle for not actually having a product. Uh, and I think if you probably look at the history of video games, 
the games that took like more than probably se- if a game took seven years, it wasn't gonna happen. Like there's something horribly wrong, or it got poorly reviewed, like this one. Right. The the bottom line is this game was mismanaged and it was in development hell, where there was no focus. They, I, I'm going off my outline. I'm just through the outline. This is where we're at. The game was mismanaged. They had to nail things down and nail nail down like routine design decisions, and they wouldn't make the decision. They would have a meeting, they would talk about it. Somebody would say one thing, the other guy would say another thing. Nobody would make a decision, and then they would come back to it. And they, a week later, they would do the same thing. And a week later, a week later, a week later, and some of these design decisions weren't made for years. It's pretty sad. Yeah. So anyway, when they're talking about the studios at war against themselves, it was uh, Edmonton, Alberta, and Austin. And apparently, you know, Austin had you know Austin has had experience with online games with SW Tour, and they would come up with ideas. And since they weren't considered the A team, which would be Edmonton, they weren't listened to. And then at the end of the day. Edmonton fix it and then say, well, we're going to let you guys handle this later. I was like, okay, thanks. Like, you sent me a broken game and now I've got to fix it. Right? I mean, you have I to communicate. Like, I guess that's when they would do their magic and make right. it turn into the special game of the year. Magic. The magic is gone. It's kind of like me. I've been a New York Giants fan my whole life. And unfortunately, every time when we start off get off to a poor start and our odds are making the playoffs are like 5%, we always say that, well, we're the New York Giants and it's in our DNA that we can just come back. It happened this year. So anyway, the, the New York Giants, they always say they're going to come back when we have like a 5% odds because they say it's in their DNA. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we haven't done it. Time. And they say it's in, in their DNA but because they did it in their Super Bowl runs where they started off poorly. And they said, we'll just fix it later. It's the same thing. We'll just fix it later. And lately they've not been able to do it. And the reality is, is that if you look at the New York Giants and the Super Bowl teams, none of them are left. It's the same, you know, only Eli is left for most teams. It's the same thing with this. A lot of these people quit. They talk about stress casualties which I've never heard of. Hmm. You know, they always talk about how they need the union, developers need to unionize and programmers need to unionize because they're being worked to the bone. But I've never heard of stress casualties where the stress was so bad that people were like sitting in the closet crying while they were working. It might be pretty stressful to work on something for a few years and have it deleted. Yeah. Stress casualties. And they would say it. Like and and the developer said it that people were having like nervous breakdowns over the game, and people would take off for a month to three months just because of the stress, and sometimes they wouldn't come back. Maybe it wouldn't not have been a good idea to come back to a game like this. No. All right. I mean, what's next? They said they're sitting in the closet crying. Could you imagine if some developer killed themselves over a game? Mm-mm. That would be so sad. Right. So what would they put on the tombstone? Committed suicide? Over Anthem? Over designing Anthem? Hmm. Ha! Right, nobody ever reads those, but like 200 years from now, somebody's going to read it. First off, this game won't be remembered, so they won't know what Anthem is. But speaking of being remembered... This game had, that's a, that's a beautiful segue, unplanned, but this game had three <laughs> names, and the first name was called Dylan. It was called Dylan for Bob Dylan because they said that this game was going to be legendary and that it, it would be remembered for decades, if not a century from now. Nope. Not so much. Not negative, not positively. Uh, they said that we talked about for decades, if not a century from now. Like, hey, we're talking about it, but that's only because this game is more fun to talk about. <laughs> 
this game is yeah. more fun to talk about than it is to play. So they went from there, they went from there to Beyond, and they couldn't get the trademark for that because the the name Beyond is pretty ubiquitous, and you can't just trademark something that's being commonly used. It makes it pretty tough to do. Then they said an Anthem, and they're like, well, what the hell does Anthem mean? They mean Anthem of Creation. So yeah. They talked about making this game remembered. And it, it is sad that it is more fun to talk about this game and complain about the game than it is to play it. I had such high hopes, right? This game was supposed to be Iron Man in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> like, how do you mess that premise up of saying it's Iron Man in the Garden of Eden? It's like, oh, okay. Sounds good. And we get recycled content and bugs and very little content. You know, mm -hmm. they were even talking about how some of the facial expressions didn't make any sense because I get, for uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, you... If you're, if you've lived under a rock, Mass Effect Andromeda had really bad facial expressions, and their directive was to make it so that they were, that this game was unmameable. So they made their facial expressions really realistic and over the top. The problem is, is that since story kept changing over and over again, and the vision kept changing, and they kept changing from what they were doing that the facial expressions didn't really fit the context, which is why sometimes it doesn't make sense. Which is why sometimes when they're, it's even when they're talking, they're acting like something's happened. It hasn't happened. It's already been proven several times over that they took the game and chopped it up. Like, for instance, in the, in the Stronghold Tyrant Mine, you're talking to somebody that you already know, but you haven't met him yet. But later on in the, later on, you meet him for the first time. Like, they didn't even catch it. I don't know what quality assurance was doing. So, yeah. So, they didn't test the game either. They they didn't change the facial expressions. They were too expensive. It was too expensive to do it, so they just left them there. 2015, 2016, they basically didn't do anything. Like, they were messing around with the system, trying to get the frostbite to work, dealing with things like that. Uh... Another that was a waste of time because they still had so many glitches even when the game came out. Right, but they've only been working on actually for a year and a half in production. But another problem they had is they kept changing the travel modes. Like the game, they went from flying to not flying to flying to not flying, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but they had to keep redoing the levels every time they did that. Like at one point in time, they had a game where you were climbing around. You were like climbing around mountains. Stuff like that. Like, oh, well, we don't do that, so let's change it to flying. And then they had to change the zone depths and zone heights and where you can fly in your borders and stuff like that. Every time. Frustrating. All right, so imagine yeah. working on it, and they change it five or six times. And they have to change the level five or six times. Right, I mean, they, they, that's what they did. When they, when they changed something, they threw out everything they worked on before. Like, this is not how you run a company. Mm-mm. Nope. Just throw it to create work and then do it. You need to decide that where you're going first. Then you need to go there. I mean, they were even saying for the survival when they were doing, like, bulk, having you fight electric storms or fix, you know, fixed volcanoes that were getting ready to erupt. They said they went down that path, they did it, and it's like, and they were like, you know what, this isn't fun. So they scrapped it for not being fun. So they had to, cool they, I don't know if I talked about this, but they had decisions that took them years. Basic decisions took them years. Have I talked about that? Yeah. Yeah. So another thing is they were not allowed to talk about Destiny or look at Destiny. So if they were to say, well, this is a mistake that Destiny made, they'd be in trouble. But we all know this is kind of like Destiny, but they weren't allowed to. <laughs> so I guess uh, pre-2018, no, I think it was the Christmas before 2018, they allowed every employee in uh, EA to play the game over Christmas break. And the CEO hated it and told them they had six weeks to come up with a good product. At that point in time, and, and actually, 
yeah, Patrick Soderlin, the CEO at the time said said it. So this is not what you promised, and I'm going to be there in six weeks, and I want to see something better. So they like put in flight, and they find before you know before they were walking around. I mean, they were they have iterations where they're walking around, they're running around like Destiny, but they decided that wasn't what they were looking for. But in six weeks, they went from walking to flying. So the CEO gets there and is like, "Wow, this is great. This is exactly what I'm looking for." I'm not going to say the expletive that he was quoted at, but he said, "This is great." This is exactly what I wanted. So that's he's responsible for that, for them putting the flight in, All right? But they went straight from there to doing the E3 video where we're supposed to be in a live, breathing world where we can we can all go explore and everybody looks so realistic and we can walk around town. Yeah, that was all fake. That point in yeah. time, that they said this is actual gameplay demo and people always complain about why it ask why is it different. That wasn't what they were doing. That was it was completely fake. Some lawyer should do a class action lawsuit against any gaming company that says this is actual gameplay and then it's not in there. <laughs> That's gotta be false advertising. That's gotta be like when you go buy a car, then you go get there and you can't actually get that car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Advertising. So that one CEO is the one that pushed it for that direction, but at that point in time, from E3 on, they had one mission. That's why there's not very many missions right now. That's why you've got three strongholds. The reality is this game is at least a year early, at least. And they wasted time, they mismanaged, they miscommunicated. So they actually, when they did it, they actually had a one Bioware initiative where they tried to get everybody to work together because that's not good to have your company be split up into individual companies unless they're totally autonomous. Like if they're set up to be totally separate, that's one thing, but they were all working on the project acting like they're different companies. So you could argue that this was not all, all of EA's fault. Like everybody said, it's EA that did it, it's EA that did it, it's Bioware that did it, or should I say, new Bioware, right? There's apparently, there's a difference between new Bioware and old Bioware, right? They sat around for years and years and years. What were they doing? They sat around for, for like five years, didn't have anything nailed down. And then the EA says, hey, this game is coming out in a year and a half, and that's it. And then they started actually producing something, and that's what you see. What you see is what you get. Is they started nailing it down. But how, I don't understand how you run a company like this. No. Right? People are saying, "Well, well you know, there, there's people on YouTube saying this is how you, this is how you learn to do better in the future for video games." This is not a lesson just for video gaming companies. This is a video game. This is sorry. This is a lesson for any company. Right? I would not want mm -hmm. to run any of my businesses like this, nor when I work for somebody would I want to run my business the way that this is being run. But before we move on, yeah. <laughs> the I guess the other thing is they were saying is, is one of the devs said it, that reading the reviews was a, like a laundry list of the things that they told the EA executives needed to be fixed. But at that point in time, they weren't trying to hear it, right? I'm sorry. Go work for somebody and tell them you're not going to have a product for, for seven years and see what they say. See how that goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were all like $240 from us. They were all like $240 from us. Well, we're on the origin pass, but your point is, that's a lot of money. $60 yeah. per. Right, sixty dollars a person. So all you, all everybody did, you dropped sixty bucks to finish their beta. So I had a feeling that maybe we'd get somebody that would come out and say it. I didn't, man. I didn't think there'd be nineteen people come out. I didn't think it was it would be this bad. I thought they rebooted maybe once. <laughs> mm -mm. Sounds to me like they rebooted this game twenty to thirty times. Yeah. And these are management issues, right? And any company that you want to stay away from. 
this I would say this not just to take away from just video games, but it's for business in general. I would say the number one thing is you've got to have a vision. You've got to have a clear division. Sorry, clear vision. It's got to be communicated. All right. Number two, confirmation bias is a bitch. All right. It's like you're saying, like there's a business story where they talk about the trip to Abilene, where, long story short, there's a family that, that spends all day driving to Abilene to go and get the best burgers in Texas. So they spend eight hours. And they get back to their house. They go to have the burgers and fries. They get back to their house. And then they're like, well, why do we take a trip? And they, they said because they thought each one of them looked at each other and said, I thought you wanted those burgers and fries. And they're like, well, you know, those burgers and fries really aren't that good. They don't taste good. They're soggy. They're cold. <laughs> and I only went because you wanted to go. So everybody's thinking this is what they need. And it's not actually what they need. Right? Yeah. It's, Right, we've taken a trip to Abilene here with the game. That somehow, some way, the Bioware magic's gonna just slip in. Right? They're all drinking the Kool Aid. <laughs> Everybody's drinking the same Kool Aid. You can't do that. Serious. If you, you, not just gaming. It's not just a gaming lesson. It's a real life lesson. You've yeah. got to be able to allow people. To communicate alternate ideas and you've got to be able to evaluate them and see if they're realistic right in this case they were but apparently they had some sort of mock reviews where they said that they thought, they thought that they would the scores would be in the 70s and that they would just patch patch the fun in later dumbest thing I've ever heard <laughs> patch the fun in later what's the third lesson Uh-oh. The third lesson is that everybody has got to be on the same side. You can't have everybody working on a project fighting each other. How does that work? Mm -mm. A kingdom divided, divided against itself, against itself. will not stand. Will not stand. So this is what you got. A house, a kingdom, a career, a company, everything won't stand. Um, so the one thing I got, or I got a couple of things, is that you have to be willing to listen to feedback and not throw it out the window. And if you, um, if you don't listen to feedback, you are going to be stuck in your state and there won't be any improvement. And then it's going to come out in the end that, like these developers um, saw that there were um, all the stuff that they told the upper echelon people about what needed to be done to fix stuff in the game. They didn't do it and all the um, consumers are saying that's what should be done and the developers, all they have to say is, I told you so. But by this time, they're so frustrated with the people that are, that are in charge that, you know, they just basically gave up. And another thing hold on, was... Hold on, but... Yes. Huh? You said listen to feedback? Not always. You can't, here's the thing, you can't always just listen to everybody's feedback and go a thousand different directions that don't make any sense. You're taking a trip to Abilene. But it better, what you're doing better work. Right? They talk about the one developer team where the one developer who was in charge, they said he was like John Luke Picard where he said, this is the orders, and that's how you do it. That's how I run mm -hmm. my businesses, is that I'm like John Luke Picard. You will follow my orders or get off a ship. But they also talk about another Bioware team where they're all like a pirate ship, where they all kind of went off in their own directions, but they always did what was for the good of the ship, and they might get a little bit crazy, but they always come back to the ship and what the goal of the ship should be, doing what's right for the ship and for the pirates mm -hmm. on board. Right. Mm -hmm. So they had a, a direction, like you were saying before. There was a direction. There, were, there was nothing getting done. They were they were yep. do, going off in their own direction, directions, not coming to a conclusion, just deleting it all. Yeah. 
And like they said, it will not come together like magic without a plan. And another thing, another word that kept sticking out is that um, this game, like in any other business that you can be involved in, it has potential. Potential is always the word that is used, but if you don't listen to good feedback and good um, direction, then or have a good plan and direction, then the potential is just the word. You'll never get to the level that you get into in a in a game or in a business. Yeah, and the things that I only like about, I mean. I like the gameplay, but the things I like most about the game is the story and how they build up the character. So the problem with that is there's nothing about your character other than that they're a freelancer. And do you know nothing about your character? And there's right, I don't ca I don't care about the story. This is Bioware. Yeah. They're supposed to be legendary storytellers. And the storytelling so bad, I don't care. Right? You walk around fart Tarsus, and I don't care about the characters. I don't care about what they're talking about. They have all these goofy facial expressions because there's too many of them that don't make any sense. I don't know if they're terrified or horrified or happy. Right? They're like terrified when they should be happy because somebody took in the wrong story and flipped the story around to the wrong thing. And you're right. You don't even get the, you. You created your character. What does your character look like? Do you remember? No. Oh, no. It's been so long. <laughs> you don't even remember it. Did and we create our own about, character? Yeah, we did. We did faces and everything. Oh and wow. And you want to talk about something that's really bad? And and this is confirmed. And you know, I played games for a while. And yeah, the tri the tomb trials, trials of the legionnaires. <laughs> That was only put in there to make it seem like there's more content. So that's a the quest. I think the one YouTuber said that this this is the quest that sucked their soul out. That was he put. That's what he put in there as a title. This is the quest that sucked his soul out, where they've got you just doing stupid stuff like do a hundred of this, do a hundred of that, melee the one hundred mobs, and get this many chests of chests, get that many collectibles. Because they're trying to slow it down and make it seem like they've got more content because the game needed a, needed another year. Right? Yeah. The game, needed, the game needed another year, and it's, and it's confirmed. But from what they're saying, this was controversial even inside Bioware that they were going to do this. And apparently, they were going to have, they were going to even get it based on time, where you can only make progress every every two or three days, and even slow down even more. Right. Uh, it's just annoying. Annoying. So yeah. what? Bioware, I think I'll quit it for a year. Bioware, Bioware. What are you gonna do now? You didn't hit your goals. You had forecasts that you were gonna bring in half a billion dollars. You only brought in a hundred million. Your money. Most of the money is gone in the first month. Nobody's doing microtransactions. Not money. Not much money coming in. What are you gonna do now? You done. You yeah. you messed up. Bad. The game has potential, but hey, the graveyard is full of potential. Potential, right? the word again. Right. I am. Yeah. I hate. I hate it. I hate that you did this. Yeah. I, I, I can. I will no longer look forward to any games after this. Yeah, they like ruin their whole workspace. They ruin, they ruin their, their name. Whole outlook. They ruin their name. Junior, what do you think about the game? You played it longer than any of it. As far as time spent. Um, I don't know. What's, I think. I don't know. Huh? I don't know. Well, I think it's just kind of like a Core combat is fun, but story is not good. They're recycling content. And when I ask EA, EA Bioware, what are you going to do? The roadmap that you have seems kind of weak. So mm -hmm. what are we getting in three months? We're getting one new stronghold and one new raid. Okay, Y'all are going to need to put out content a little bit faster. You might be able to pull this off, 
you might be able to make this a good game and make an epic comeback like Destiny 2 or or the Division, but people are gonna not come back. Right? You you've you've lost out. So yeah. You're gonna. I would like to see you actually put in the content you should have and double down in the next year. Because I'll, I'll be honest, if you're comparing this game to like, sorry, this game is almost like an MMO. And I'm sorry, from the games that I played, and I'm a long-time MMO player, you, you play, look at World of Warcraft. There's not very much content. You don't have 3% of the content that an MMO would have on an expansion, and this is your first game. Yeah, mm. and then um, games like Dragon Age and Stay Question, which I really like playing because it had like a lot of story and a lot of character and awesome gameplay, all, and it looked tremendous what about? all in one. And then, like, that was a Bioware game, and it was amazing. It got um, a two, 2014 award for the best game, but the workers at EA didn't really like that because um, they had to work twice as hard, and they were pushing, and, they, and I read in an article that they needed that to lose. And then Anthem was like Fall 76. No, not that bad. Let's not get too far. <laughs> I'm sorry. I look at Fallout 76 and I want to throw up. <laughs> really? Fallout 76. And I know, and I know some of the developers there personally. Love you, but yeah, that game is crap. Okay. It it was supposed to have high quality detail. Yeah. Right. Alive. All right, so I think we've gone a while. EA Bioware. This game is like a crime, a crime against humanity. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in you. Just like I'm disappointed that we had a World War One and a World War Two. That's how how disappointed I am in you. Get it together. Yeah. Get it together. I thought Anthem was going to be a good game. Mm -hmm. it, the thing is, it could, it could be good. Potential. But they would have to. They should have buckled down for another year, and we, we I guess, we'll find out in a year from now if they abandon the project like they did Mass Effect Andromeda, which only. Mass Effect Andromeda only brought in $130 million. And they've already canceled the plans for the other ones. This one only brought in... This one only brought in $100 million. We'll see what happens. Mm. So, yeah, right, if you drop see. 60 bucks, if you're not doing the Origin Pass, Monthly Pass like we are, then I feel bad that you wasted your money. You could rage quit and start back up in the year. Let's see what happens. Right. Too bad you can't get your money back. So, right. I mean, the way this game is right now, they almost... What what game was Final Fantasy... 15. Which one was the one they rebooted? Four, it was 14, right? 7. No. No, 7. No. Final Fantasy 4, the online game, they had to reboot it. The online game, I think it was Final Fantasy 14, 12, 12 13... The online game was so bad in the beginning that they launched the game, their stock price went down. They got poor reviews. They actually shut the game down. I played it. I played the game originally, but they actually shut the game down and they took a year off and then they reopened the servers and they came out and it got great reviews. It like <laughs> it like it was like you know a you know what a butterfly is before it's a butterfly? A caterpillar. Caterpillar. The maggot. A chrysalis. Maggot. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maggots turn into butterflies. Yeah. Right? That's what they did. I... They turned they turned from a maggot to a butterfly. So I guess we'll find out here in the next year if this game is gonna stay a maggot 
or it's going to turn into a butterfly. I feel like Anthem is in the chrysalis stage. But at least the like, game looks pretty. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Most be it's the most beautiful game I've ever played. That's too bad. It's too bad it's something we see every time we play. Same view, same scenery, everything. I think. Right. I mean, right. Uh, if you look at it, they were supposed to alter the environments between. They had different environments and weather and stuff like that. Like you're gonna be attacked by. You'll know, be like an ice storm coming in. But they couldn't. The engine couldn't handle it. So they did that. They had it built for that. They spent a lot of time on that, and then had to scrap it. Mm -hmm. I think Anthem is the uh, 2.5. Oh, 5. Wow. That's, your that's your review? Mm-hmm. I think at this point, I would probably agree with it. Mm-hmm. The game should be 5.5 5 out of 5. So anyway, thanks for joining us at Nerder Things. Please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment below, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. 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 Bye.